John Ramirez grew up in the Bronx, where his relatives practiced Santa Rita. My father's side came from a family of witches and warlocks. My father was very heavy into Santeria, very heavy into spiritualism. John longed for a relationship with his dad, but his father was abusive. There was no love, there was no compassion. We watched him beat my mother in, in house. He came in drunk most of the time, uh, demanding stuff, asking for stuff. If things wasn't done a certain way, it was always put down, hurtful words, dummy, stupid, you're going to amount to nothing, that kind of stuff. I would just stand by the door and look and see what he was up to because I was looking to see if there was time for me. Just to have an interaction, right? We did something, my dad and I did something. But he was connected to the demons. He was connected to spiritualism. John's mother was also influenced by Santeria. At his aunt's suggestion, she took John to a tarot card reading. The lady sent the cards. I had 30 days to do a ceremony or I would be blind. So my mother, as a good mother, didn't want nothing to happen to her son, so we did it. They blindfolded me did a bath for me with herbs, and they started chanting and calling the five main god demons from Santeria. From that moment, John's life changed. My whole personality, everything who I stand for as a young boy, was no longer there. I felt like someone took a black blanket and just put it right over me, spiritually. I wasn't answering not only to my mom and my dad, but I was answering to the demons. John's involvement with Santeria deepened quickly. I was being taught and trained with high-ranked devil worshippers into spiritualism. If I went to sinking into funerals, acting like I knew the person that died because I wanted to buy the soul, or that person that died because I can get that soul and put it on somebody and die the same way. When drug dealers got killed in the street, I wanted to run out and get the blood because I can use that human blood to do witchcraft. For the first time in his life, John felt powerful and respected. People knew that I was a force to be reckoned with. I liked that power. I was talked down to as a young boy. Now I had the authority and the power that I can do whatever I want. When John was 13, his father was murdered in a bar fight. John gave credit to the devil for relieving his mother's suffering. I'd be up at five in the morning calling out to God saying, help my mother, and no one showed up. But the devil showed up because he killed my dad. I believe the devil said, well, no one loves you, but I love you. Your father can't provide for you, but I, I, I'm your provider. The devil said to me, uh, to, to, the, to the religion, I give you anything you want, just ask. John says Satan became the father he never had. John was devoted to him. I light up my candles, I spit the rum, I spit the cigar smoke, the cigar smoke means power. If I didn't have money for a roost, I'd cut myself and use my own blood and pour it in. The whole atmosphere of the room changes. And you know there's something there. And then when it's there, you have to dress him like a family member. My father, I'm here. What would you like to speak to me about? What is it that you want me to do? As time went on, John also practiced the dark arts outside his apartment. He preyed on Christians in particular. At the clubs, I would go around looking for Christians. And I knew that in the club, you was in the devil's playground. So I knew that if I can get into it, and you had a beer to already in your system, I knew all I had to do was just say, listen, I have something to tell you today. And right now, you will open the door, and you said, what is it you need to tell me? You gave me gateway. Eventually, John became a high priest in Palo Mayambe, a form of African spiritualism. As he became more powerful, John took warfare seriously. The devil told me that I had to go into the neighborhood in the spirit realm in order to weaken it in the natural. Whatever you kill in the spirit realm, you can kill in the natural. So I will leave my body home and I should project myself into different boroughs, different regions, different states, different countries. And as I follow the neighborhood, I would speak curses into the neighborhood, speak things that I wanted to happen into the neighborhood. Sometimes I will go into neighborhoods and I see this group of people in the spirit realm in the corner praying, holding hands, heads bowed, praying up a storm. And there was no accomplishment in that neighborhood. That neighborhood was sanctified, blessed to pray. There was, you couldn't touch it. But the other neighborhoods, it was party time. Around that time, John met a girl who intrigued him. I said, well, you're not gonna hang out with her. She's good looking. And she invited me to church. She also invited John to meet her parents, 
who talked to him about Jesus. They had the Bible out. Hey, listen, we want to talk to you about this. I'm like, oh, I can't come to your house. And your parents are crazy. I said, at least let me digest the food, and then you can talk about this Jesus guy. And then after I leave her, I will go to worship. I will go to double church and kill animals all night long. And then I will come back and see her, but she didn't know. John found the Christians amusing and harmless. We had a different system that they had. Their stuff was just kisses, hallelujah, we love you. So I kept coming to church to please her, but I wasn't going to leave people I was committed to. One Sunday morning, the pastor gave an altar call. John went forward, but wasn't prepared for what happened next. I said, well, the devil can't touch me here. I'm in front of the pastor now. I'm protected. All of a sudden, I got demon possessed. I grabbed them by the throat, picked them up in there, and said, I came for you. And all these big men came out to see, try to grab me. I was just throwing people around like right guys. And then 200 something people got up and raised up hands. Spiritual warfare for a person that would have killed them on a heartbeat. I saw the power of God in the church. One of the guys was whispering back in my ear and say, say Jesus is Lord, say Jesus is Lord, say it, say it. Jesus. I couldn't open my mouth. And then Jesus suddenly I was able to say, Jesus is, Lord. Jesus is Lord. And the devil left. John was embarrassed about the outburst, but not sure what to do next. One of the church elders approached him a few days later. He said, Jesus wants you to have this. He gave me a sweatshirt. They said, you're a warrior for Christ. For someone to come and say, this is a gift in Christ, because he loves you. To me, that was amazing. I couldn't believe that Jesus loved me. But I was committed to the dark side. I was committed to the demons. I was committed to the devil and I was between two worlds. One night, John decided to end the struggle between the two worlds the only way he knew how. I said, boy, if Jesus can't have me, the devil can't have me, the best way out of suicide. In my ignorance, in my shame, in my, in my mind that was so far gone, spiritually drained, very spiritually drained. John didn't know how to pray, but he began to talk to God. I don't know what they call you, Jesus, whatever they call you in church. I don't like you. I never liked you. I, ne I never had nothing to do with you. I want no dealings with you. I hate you. I don't want to be part of you. I, don't want to, I never want to be a Christian. I disown you. If that's going to get you away from me, I will worship the devil to the day I die. I whisper, saying, if you are bigger than the God that I serve, then you show me tonight or leave me alone. John went to sleep and dreamed he was on a subway. The train was filled with people and the faces was drained, and we were going somewhere that I know that was not good. And as the train was going faster than light, there was a lady dressed very elegant, and she started talking to me in demonic tongues. I understood the tongue, traitor, you're leaving us. So I try to get into the middle of the train, in the middle of the people, so she won't reach me. Pop hit, and the doors opened, I ended up in hell. John stepped out of the subway and into the darkness. As I went to the tunnels of the hell, the heat it wasn't a heat that you feel on earth. It grips you, and the fear ropes around you. There's no hope. The hope is removed. As I got to a part of the tunnel, the devil came out, bigger and more strong. I've never seen him like that. And he said to me, I've been with you since you were nine years old. I've been a father to you. I've given you everything. He said, I'm going to keep you here, because if I can keep you here, you won't wake up upstairs, which is on earth. And he said, You belong to me, and you're not gonna leave. You know too many secrets about my religion. And when he went to grab me, to snuff me, this three foot cross appeared in my hands. I couldn't understand how a cross would appear in my hands. I never called for the cross. I put it on the devil. And he felt like nothing. He felt like he was a, a baby. No powers at the foot of the cross. When John woke up, he was a changed man. And I knew that Jesus was the Lord. I bent my knee to the cross. And Jesus came into my life. I took a white piece of paper and I wrote down a servant, a slave of Jesus Christ. I serve you all the days of my life. 
John threw out all of his witchcraft paraphernalia, but the battle wasn't over. He was under spiritual attack every night for the next month. At night, I felt a presence coming to the room. And then when I would turn around, I would actually sometimes see what was there. Or sometimes I would just slip around and somehow fall asleep up this way, and I would just feel someone's hands just grab me by my throat and try to pick me off of bed and try to rip my body. I ripped my soul out of my body. Sometimes they grab by my feet and the bed would shake and they would bring it up and levitate the bed and levitate me to the point that I was, sometimes I might even reach the ceiling and I couldn't breathe and I couldn't cry out. I couldn't talk. I felt like I was choking. I felt like they were choking the life out of me and I would try to call out for Jesus uh, and the words wouldn't come out. And then in the end of the world, come out, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Saves me. And it would go away. John didn't understand why God permitted the nightly struggles. I asked the Lord, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why this torment? Why did you allow these people to abuse me this way? I gave my life to you. I told you I would serve you. And he said to me, I wanted to know how much you love me, how much you trust me. And no devil ever showed up to my house ever again. John says he wouldn't trade anything for what he's found in Christ. For 25 years of my life, I was able to do anything to anybody. Anyway, I count that out to be foolish. In Christ. He's my own all. He's the breath that I breathe. He walks with me. I can hear the sound of his voice in my ear. Today, John shares the gospel with everyone he can. He has written a book about his experiences called Out of the Devil's Cauldron. I've been victorious in Christ. I got peace. I'm not empty no more. I got fulfillment. I got a purpose and I have a destiny today. And all because I said yes to the cross. Now I am evangelist for the kingdom of light. No more an evangelist for the dark side. I expose the dark side every time the Lord gives me a chance. Because you don't have to die in your sins. You don't have to shed blood like in Palamanyumbe. Jesus shed the blood for you. That's the blood that counts the one at the cross. Uh, John, uh, you really had challenges. Your father practiced uh, something called Santeria. Santeria. Uh, which is a, a, just a demonic religion, I assume? Yes, it's the number one demonic religion in the world today. And, and um, uh, your father and your mother, constant turmoil, he used to beat her. Uh, uh, but when you were eight years old, your mom took you to a tarot reader. What happened? My mom, my mom was going with my aunt, and basically, when I got there, the, the, the lady, the witch, that we read the cards, uh, she, she focused on me. She didn't focus on my mom. She didn't focus on my aunt. She told the, 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 my mom that, uh, that she saw in, in the spirit that I was going to lose my eyesight, that if I didn't get a, a ceremony done within the next 30 days, I was going to be completely blind. So my mom panicked, as every mother would, and uh, my mom allowed me to get the cards read, the lady read, and uh, they, they went on, and a couple of days later, they initiated me to the dark side at the age of eight years old. And uh, when... Uh uh, at 13, you actually were willing or praying for your father to die? Yes. Yeah, I, 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 would, I, would, I remember as my, I have two other brothers, and we would stay up all night. And he, he beat my mother all night long. So he'll beat my mother all night long. So we'll, we'll, we'll be in the room. Sometimes we run out the room to try to help our moms from him beating her. And he would throw us around. And then we'll go back into the room. And so one day I sat in the bed and, and started to pray. Uh, I was just praying. I wasn't even praying to God. I was, I was just praying, saying, I hope he dies. I hope he dies. I hope someone kills him. And at the age of 13 years old, my father got shot at the age of 33 in the face for a woman at a social club when he had a good wife home. Did you feel guilty about that? I was rejoicing, uh, to be truthfully honest. I was rejoicing because I know the torment and the pain in my house and the silent pain to go to school and put up a face at the, as a young boy and act like everything was okay home, to put up a face and knowing that there was nothing but torment in my house. Uh, you began to really grow in the demonic. Uh, uh, and you, why did you feel Satan was your father? My father was a devil worshiper. 
And I came from a generation of devil worship on my father's side, from generations and generations of Santeria, spiritualism, car readings, uh, Palamayumbe. Palamayumbe is when you sell your soul to the devil and you make a contract with the blood, which I did and later on in my years. And uh, I would sit with the devil and speak to the devil all night long. I was going to demon church at the age of eight years old from seven in the evening to five in the morning to be trained with principalities, a demonic spirit, territorial spirit. I was learning stuff in the, in the spirit realm beyond at the age of eight. So to me, it was, uh, I told the devil, if you kill my father, you know, you can have me. So I told the devil, you can have me. And the devil said, well, I replace the old with the new. Yeah, but God had a secret weapon, oh, big a time. beautiful woman. And she invited you to church. What happened? It, actually, she was a backslider. Oh, <laughs> she, she was a backslider. So, so God, God got two for the price of one. <laughs> so, so what happened when you went to that church? Well, I, I, actually, I went to the church. I asked the devil permission. I asked the devil, could I go to church? He said, go to church. Those people are weak. They don't, they don't have no strength against us. They don't have no power against us. You can go to church. But then I was really after, after the girl because she's a pretty girl, and she lived in the neighborhood, so I didn't have to move my car around, so we can go eat anywhere. <laughs> so I thought that was a good deal. But, you know, God was setting up a, a game plan, you know, for my life. Uh, well, well, you really got upset one time with the pastor. What happened? Well, you know, the devil, I, I went to church a little too much without asking permission anymore. And then the devil said, the devil showed up in church, in church. The devil showed up, and I hear the devil whisper in my ear and tell me, I didn't tell you to come this Sunday. I didn't give you permission to come this Sunday. It was strange because the pastor did an altar call in the, in the middle of the service. Usually they do that like at the end of the service. So I got up. I said, well, if I go by the pastor, the devil don't go after me. He will leave me alone. So when I went up, a whole people came up to the middle. So I was like one of the last ones to pray for. I said, well, I stay here by the time he come pray. I don't want him to pray for me anyway. But by the time he gets to me, he's tired and the devil's gone. That was my plan. But when he came up to me, the devil possessed me right there, and I grabbed them by the throat, and I picked them up in the air, and I said, today is the day you're going to die. And then all these foul stuff came out of my mouth, and people jumped out of the seats. And, uh, I mean, big men jumped out of the seats, tried to grab me down and peel my hands off the pastor's throat. He was turning purple. But he goes home, and he prays a prayer, an unbelievable prayer. Listen to this. John cried out to God, if you are bigger than my God, with a small g, although he didn't know it at the time, than my God that I serve, show me tonight, or just leave me alone. Uh, his, his whole life was devoted to his father, the devil. He literally had that relationship with the devil. And uh, a pretty girl uh, says, let's go to church. He goes to this church. He almost kills the pastor. The devil just had total control over him. He, he, he goes home and he cries out to God, if you are bigger than the God I serve, show me or just leave me alone. After you prayed that prayer, what happened? I, I just sat on the bed. It was just something that just came out. It wasn't even planned. And uh, because I really didn't want to be a Christian, uh, I thought Christianity was not for me. It was just something that it was my taste, my cup of tea. My thing was devil worshiping, recruiting people, running regents, putting spells on people, making a lot of money doing that. But I, I went into this deep sleep, like an anesthesia sleep. And I ended up in this train that was going faster than anything you can imagine. And the train was filled with people. But the people, you couldn't see the faces because their faces were blank. And when the train crashed and hit, opened up the, opened up the doors and I ended up in hell. And when I ended up in hell... Now, I, now, you say that you had this dream, but you also told me earlier that it really was a real experience. It, it was a real experience. It, it, this was more, more real than the oxygen I breathe, Sid. This was more real okay. than the oxygen I breathe. I, I, there was no way for me to leave 25 years of devil worshipping at a hundred thousand dollar witchcraft stuff in my house for, name, for a guy named Jesus that i never seen in my life. So you find yourself in hell. I what find happened? myself in hell. Uh, I, I'm running to the, to the portals of hell, trying to find a way out, a window, a door. And then, uh, the, first of all, this fear grips on you like, like, like a garment, and, and, and it grips on you, and then you hear wailing, and you hear so much thing going on at the same time. You're so desperate, you want to get out. And when I'm trying to get out, the devil shows up in hell and tells me, I'm going to keep you here. You know too much about the occult. You know too much. i give you too much rank, too much secrets. I need to destroy you. So as he's saying that, he's coming, he's going to launch at me. As he's launching towards me, this cross appeared in hell. And I put it on him. And he fell out like a toddler. And, and, and I, so I got back up and I ran. And then he tells me, 
uh, somewhere down the deeper part of hell, he shows up again. He said, I'm going to destroy you. So here I am talking with him in demonic tongues. Because the devil copies everything from the kingdom of Jesus he Christ. He can't create it. He can't create he's, a thing. He's a counterfeit. He's a artist. counterfeit bootleg and a copycat. <laughs> <laughs> For real. So, so here I am. And, and, and here I am there. He comes out again. And then I told him, I'm going to destroy you, I told him. And I show him the marks that I saw in my soul. He said, he said, oh, you're a fool. I give you those marks. You, I own you. Again, he went to grab me for the last time. The cross of Jesus Christ appeared. And, and, as a, and he fell. I mean, he, he actually fell on the foot of the cross. He just fell down on the foot of the cross like he was worshiping. He fell down like nothing. I woke up out of a dream. It's like when, when, when you're in ICU and you hit those things on, on, your, on, your, on your chest to bring you back to life. That's what happened to me. It was something hit me. I came back into life. And I knew that night that Yeshua was the truth, the way, and the life. And I bent my knees. So, you, you, you tell me that you now have a new father. Who's your father? I have a father that I can't even describe. He has to be revealed. That's how awesome he is. The days, everything of my tormenting days, the days of my father. There's one thing that I, that, that, that I, I asked John off the air. I said, John, you went through a lot of stuff. I mean, if you could get free from the devil, anyone could get free. But aren't you fearful today? What did you say to me? The only fear I carry in my heart for life, because I'm doing a life sentence with Jesus Christ and I want no parole. <laughs> So the only life, the only one I fear is God, is Yeshua, the Messiah. This is the only person I fear. You I know, fear no devil. I fear no witch. I fear no voodoo. I fear no witchcraft. I fear no man but the man, Jesus Christ. You know, okay, uh, John, there are demonic gateways. What are they? The gateways are your mouth, your ear gate, your mouth gate, your eye gate, stuff you watch on television, the videos you play. Can someone watching a wrong movie or something wrong on TV actually have a gateway to the demonic? Oh, absolutely, Sid, because you've got to remember the devil will put something on TV so he, he can, he can, he can uh, necessize your mind. And if you can necessize the person's mind and then the person don't have the mind of Christ anymore, now you're more addicted to the stuff on TV than going home and spending time with God. So now I stole your prayer closet. What, what about so many men, including men and women, including Christians, are now addicted to pornography. It, it, it slipped in so easily. Uh, is, could that be a, a, a doorway to the demon? Oh, absolutely. The book of Psalm 91 speaks about the four entrapments of the enemy. And one entrapment is the most dangerous one is the young lion. The young lion speaks about the sin that we think we can control, but in the end, if you don't kill it, end up controlling you. So you got 80% 80, 80 of, of people that walk with the Lord, Christians, that are, that are bound to, to pornography because they thought that, hey, I can turn it off anytime I want. I don't have to watch it today. That's what alcoholics say. Well, uh, yes. I can stop anytime, anytime I want. I want. Yeah. But, but they can't. But they can't because there's a stronghold and there's a demon attached to that stronghold. And if you don't break the legal rights and renounce it, you will never be free. Yeah, are you telling me that you could pray a prayer as strongly as you prayed in my office yesterday, and they could be free. They can be free. I, I prayed for the gentleman in Japan over the phone, and he was manifesting. I mean, stuff was coming out of his man, and he, he, he turned around, and he sent me a letter. He said, thank you, because Yeshua set me free. I want you to pray for someone at home that wants to be set free of pornography, and addictions of any kind. Would you Amen. pray that right no, now? I, I tell you, Sid, God has called me. My purpose, my destiny in the church today is to unmask the devil. And then once I unmask the devil for you, you will see how small he is and how great is your God. Right, so well. <laughs> I, 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 I have to ask John to do something. I want you to look in that camera and I want you to tell me how small the devil is and how big God is. Will you do that? I tell you right now, you want to be free, I promise you, in the name of Jesus, you can be free right there from any tormenting spirit, from any spirit, a spirit that's going in your mind, from any combination, any pornographic, any torture, any, any, any tormentors that are sent your way. I break it in the name of Jesus right now. I bind every satanic attack over your life, your purpose, your destiny, pornography, anything that is holy, suicide, oppression, depression, 
oppression. I break it. Any pharmacia spirits, I bind it right now. The Lord has told you, the Lord is speaking to me right now. He said he's going to set you free. And once you take that freedom, you give it back to Jesus. Now, be free in Jesus' name, the unmatchable name of Jesus. Now, John, from your knowledge of back there, what are the, what's the strongest weapon we have against the devil? I, I believe the Word of God is the strongest weapon you can ever have on this planet. You have to know how to proper, you have to know how to use it, you have to know how to apply. I, th I think a lot of believers, uh, they, they're not learning how to bring out targets in the enemy's camp. My intimacy with God, it, brings me, it gives me authority. And the enemy, the enemy recognizes uh, recognize that you are a child of God, and he knows the authority God has given you. And Can anyone have the same authority you have? Oh, God doesn't respect a person. What should someone do Bend if they're sleeping at night and all of a sudden they feel an oppression, they feel something in the room and it's not good? What would you do? You, you know, I had an incident not too long ago. The devil showed up in my room. I mean, the devil himself showed up in my room and my room went cold like an icebox. And it woke me up. I knew there was something there that wasn't, wasn't pleasant. And, and he tells me, I hear him, and I hear him like, uh, like an audible voice. He said, if you turn on the light, I will leave. And I had the Holy Spirit deep down inside me tell me, if you turn on the light, you have no faith. I, my, and I live by myself, John and two pillows. I got up, I got me some water, I said, I'll see you in the morning. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you and I command you to leave. And you got 30 seconds to go. But you see, but see, he knows his authority. I want you to know your authority. The devil trembles when a believer knows the word of God and the authority behind it and the name of Jesus. You told me when you were in the dark side that you used to do something called astral projection. You yes. go to neighborhoods. What would you be doing in those neighborhoods? I will, I will ask, my mission was to astral project, leave my body. I was so good at it that I would even go during the day in neighborhoods that were daytime and the ones that were nighttime, I would go back and forth and I would put curses and I would bring, move principalities from one region to another so there could be patterns and cycles to happen in the spirit round so those people won't grow and they won't meet Jesus. So that, but they had, um, they had amazing believers that knew how to pray in the spirit that would stop me from going into the neighborhood and executing the plan of the enemy. You're telling me that these believers could, you could not do anything. You couldn't put curses on them? I couldn't even lift up a finger. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, how important is praying in the spirit, praying in unknown in languages? Spirit in the spirit, it's praying in the spirit. It, 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 it's like if, you don't, if, you don't, if your body doesn't have water, you would die. If the believer today is not praying, praying in the spirit, you would die spiritually. You were telling me about these uh, cycles and patterns. What do you mean by that? Repeat. A lot, a lot of believers today don't know how to cut the rope. A lot of believers today, they're free for six months, then they go back to the bondage for eight months. They cut the rope, and then they go back again because it's like, it's like the enemy knows how to put entrapment on the believer. And then the believer, and then today, I, I have a righteous anger, said, that the church is preaching people happy, but they're not preaching people free. Boy, that's a mouthful. I don't want to go to church to be happy. I can be happy at home. <laughs> I wanted you to go to church and teach me how to fight the enemy. Teach me how to be free. Teach me how to save my marriage. Teach me how to get my children out of drugs. How to beat that devil like no tomorrow. And I believe I, that's what God has called me to unmatch the devil in the times that we're in. And not because of me, it's because who lives in me is greater. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I bind the straw man over the airways in the name of Jesus. I bind the gatekeeper. I bind any reinforcement. I shut down the second and first servant with the blood of Jesus Christ. I paralyze every devil, every hell, every demon. I paralyze an infirmity and sickness right now. Father, I separate one from another. I change their languages, confuse them. I send civil war into the enemy's camp to let them destroy each other. Loose the person right now. Loose the person in the name of Jesus. I bring heal, healing. I speak healing into your life right now. I speak restoration. Restoration. I speak restitution upon your life right now. I put the devil under your feet and keep him there. Father, in Jesus, I cage up every demon, my God, in the name of Jesus. I pour the blood of Jesus in those demon boxes. Let them be tormented night and day. And I close this prayer right now. Father God, I come against retaliation. I come against retribution. I come against any prayer for us of spirits in the unmatchable name of Jesus.
I grew up in a neighborhood that, first of all, the first killing that I experienced feet away from me when I went to get a gallon of milk was only uh, 10 feet away from me. They shot the guy like seven times. They shot him seven times as a young boy. I seen killings after killings after killings. Uh, in order to survive in the streets of the South Bronx, you had to be a killer. You have to be a murderer. You had to be smart. You had to be slick. My father's side was all witches and warlocks. We, were, we lived on witchcraft. We, lived on, we had a contract direct with the devil himself. My father, I remember when I, used to, when I, was, when I was younger, my, like eight, nine years old, I would see him going to the room to, to worship the devil, and I could feel the presence of the devil come into that room. And my father would worship and speak in tongues, in demonic tongues, and, and worship and put flowers and put candles and put water. I, 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 at seven o'clock at night to five in the morning, I was really going. To demonic, to demonic church. I was going to witchcraft church. I was, it was, I was being trained to be, I was being trained to be uh, a, a, a warlock. I was being trained with witches that were in the, in the religion for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. They were training, they were training me to learn how to speak to principality, spirits in the ground, the devil himself. You couldn't speak to the devil right away. You had to earn your right to speak to the devil. And the first mass killing, the first mass killing that they did in my neighborhood was in this house right here. The husband stabbed the lady 52 times and cut her ears off here. And then me and my brothers were hanging out with their daughter and we came to the house to, to, to walk them back home to, because we're hanging out with the daughters right here. And, uh, and, and the daughters found their mother cut up to pieces here in this house. I was in a schoolyard playing uh, with some friends in the schoolyard and, uh, and the pastor came and uh, they had this band came in and uh, they started singing songs and people started to gather in the schoolyard and it was an amazing uh, atmosphere, you know, amazing joy in that schoolyard and I, and, and I came from a broken home. This pastor is up, up on stage and, and he's, saying, he, he's talking about some Bible story and, and some Bible book and, and he's talking about how God loves everybody and all this other stuff and I'm, for the first time I'm getting kind of captivated, wow, you know, maybe God does love me, maybe, maybe God wants me, maybe God wants my family, maybe God wants to touch me and my family, maybe he, he wants to change my family around. And I said, well, I can get some of that, I'm going to get some of that, because he's coming my way, and, and this is, and, and the first time ever I felt a, an incredible love that was, it, it was un, undescribable. This pastor's coming off the stage and praying for people and touching people, so I said, now it's my turn, now he's going to touch me, now, now Jesus is going to accept me, Jesus is going to show me what love is about, and this pastor passed me by. Never touched me, never, ne ne never, never laid his hands on me. He went down the line, and when he came up to me, he passed me by and touched the other person. And I said, well, Jesus don't love me either. My dad don't love me, Jesus don't love me. We come from a broken home. Uh, Jesus, he likes the fact my mother gets beat up. He likes the fact that me and my brothers go to bed hungry. He likes the fact that, you know, uh, <clears throat> there's no heat in my apartment. He likes the fact that when we go to school, we reject misfits in school. So this Jesus guy, he's just like my father. He's no difference. He's just like my dad. So I went home broken. I went home sad. I remember that a week later, a couple of weeks later, a week later, two weeks later, I went at a schoolyard, hanging out, playing with a friend of mine, and uh, I heard I heard something <laughs> fell and hit the ground, and it was a voodoo necklace. So I took the voodoo necklace. It had many colors. I took it. I put it on, and the necklace was my first contract with the devil. We went to a tarot card reading, and when I went to the tarot card reading, uh, as a little boy, at 10 years old, we went in, the lady that was doing the tarot card, the witch lady that was doing the tarot card reading, she got fascinated, her eyes were fixed on me, and she said, this boy got, this boy, we want him, we want him, we want him, we, 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 the, 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 uh, uh, the research, which is Santeria, uh, want him, uh, spiritualism, which is spir spiritualism, is espiritismo in Spanish, Santeria, is, is, they call it worship of the saints, but it's not worship of the saints, worship of demons, we want him. And if you don't give it to us, he's going to lose his eyesight in 30 days. So my mother was so desperate as a mother. Uh, my mother saw her furniture. My mother saw her bed. She saw her, her, her bedroom set to get $250 to do my first ceremony because this lady put so much fear in us, so much fear in my mother that my mother had to sleep in the floor because there was no bedroom for her to sleep in to, because she didn't want me to lose my eyesight. So they initiated me to the dark side at the age of 10 years old. So the, the, the first love, the first encounter I had as a 10 year old boy with the devil showed up and took the offering of giving my life to him and they put five beasts around my neck, the five worst devil, the five worst demons of principalities that are under Satan, they put them right under my neck, which is Santeria, they put them right under my neck and they said, these are going to be your, 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 your spiritual guys, and this is going to be your guardian angels and they're going to take care of your life from now on.
this is the building, this corner building here used to be almost abandoned, the corner building here, this, it's in the book. That I used to go up and down, me and my brother used to go to get the water and the pump, we got the pump right there. All the apartment was all empty, the apartments, every, all the apartments was abandoned, over here. Only me and my, me and my family and two other families lived here. And my whole childhood was stolen. My whole childhood was worshiping the devil, going to demon church. I would go to demon church from seven in the evening to five in the morning, being trained by witches and warlocks, colors, principal <clears throat> rights. Who owned this region? Who's in this region? Who's running this principality? What principality name is this? I, I, had, I had, uh, had a channel powers. At the age of 13 years old, I was astral projecting my body. I would leave my body home and go to regions and go into the spirit and curse dark side, curse neighborhoods, curse put spirit of prostitution, spirit of drugs in the neighborhood, homosexual spirits here, demonic spirit here, spirit of murder, spirit of suicide. I know how to channel all those spirits into the neighborhood. At the age of 15, 16 years old, I was going into hospitals and putting death in ICU, death in one room so this person can die because I wanted to be promoted with the devil to promote up that ranks to be the biggest devil worshiper in New York City. The devil became my daddy. He replaced my dad because I prayed and I said, you kill my dad. At the age of 33 years old, my dad got shot in a nightclub in the face for a woman that wasn't even his when he had to go up and home. And the devil took him out. The devil said, I replaced the old to keep the new. And the devil became my daddy. There was a club here and my father died there at 33 years old. And we lived over there. And then when, remember that lived, when I was 11 years old, 11 year old boy, there was a store right here in the corner. And the guy got shot right there in the street right there, right next to the little corner here. The guy got killed there when I went to get the gallon of milk. And I moved up the ranks from devil worshiping. I moved up the ranks. I moved up with principalities and demons to the point that I was able to sit with the devil like I'm sitting with you today. And the devil manifests himself in human form. He or the president will come into the room and I will speak to the devil all night long. And he will give me assignments. I will go to five clubs or five lounges a night to look for people to recruit to the dark side. I would tell people their fortune. I would tell people their lives. I would tell people things that they did, things that was gonna happen to them. That then they had no clue who I was. They didn't know who I was. I just had the demonic powers. I had a taste for blood. I would, I would kill animals and drink the blood every week. I would, if I didn't have money to, if I didn't have time to buy an animal, I would cut myself and drink my own blood. The ring of, 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 of the people that I was with that was in this demonic world, doctors, lawyers, uh, principals, judges, Police officers, they were all into witchcraft. There was all, even singers today that are very well known. I put them, I, I would move principalities from that region to control uh, demons on the ground to operate the church, to cut down the church, to cut down the, the, the growth of the church, to cut down the, 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 the opportunity for people to get saved. I would, I would be drunk, I come out of a club and I would have demon possessed, drunk. I would stand in the middle of the street and say, to God, come down. You want some of this? You want me to slap you in your face? You want me to spit you in your face? You come and mess with me. I, I got married on Halloween. I had a demonic wedding on Halloween. I got married on Halloween. All the demons and principalities from different world, from different regions of the, around the world came to my wedding. No human beings came to my wedding. They were afraid to come to my wedding. So I had a crazy, I sent out invitations. No one showed up, <laughs> you know, so there was no, there were no wedding gifts. But demons came to my wedding and baptized my wedding. So my wife was a witch, I was a witch. And then my daughter was born and I was training her to be a witch too. I remember the first time that I was gonna sacrifice my first human being. The devil was sitting in the passenger side of my car when I parked. He said, you love me? I said, of course I love you, daddy. He said, there's a guy on the rooftop. He's trying to, he's trying to, he's, he's gonna to try to take you and take your money or hurt you. You kill him if you love me. So when I went up there to the rooftop, uh, I lived on the 12th floor, I remember that. And when I went up to the rooftop, I remember the part, the part that he was hiding behind, uh, he was hiding behind the stairway. And this guy was like 6'5". 250 pounds. I was half demon possessed. I felt that the, the, the demon within me and I, it wasn't even me anymore. So I was going to drag him into my apartment and stab him in the neck because I had a car drone pop with weighed about, weighed about 100 pounds plus and I had, I had like nine machetes in it and I had knives in it that I used to kill the roosters with. But when I went to grab this guy that I, I wanted to bring him to my apartment, he just went off my hands and just disappeared. He went down the, the story. I mean, this guy was like an Olympic athlete. He just, whoosh, he did just gone, disappear and I couldn't grab him and kill him. So I was very disappointed that I couldn't kill my first human being. People go to the city over. It's an evening right here. This is the evening that runs the gates of hell. This is the one I was telling you about that is in my book. It's a little demon. Give another one. Give another one. This is the demon that runs Haiti. 
What is this place? This is this is the Motanica. This is a place that they speak, every everyone in the Bronx come here to buy the ingredients to do witchcraft and hurt people and kill people. This is the place. We can go inside. Come on, let's see what we can find. If I tell you I was gonna kill you in 30 days, you prepare your funeral, you was gonna die in 30 days. If, if you, I don't care who you were, I don't care who you knew, I don't care what you, you call yourself, if you were Catholic and you say you were Christian and you say you were a believer, I was gonna kill you unless you had a real relationship with Jesus Christ. And the lady that lived downstairs, and she came up and she told me, my husband is cheating. I want you to kill the woman that she's cheating with. Put a witchcraft spell on her and kill her. How much you charge me? I said, well, come back. I'm gonna speak to the devil, my daddy, for, uh, and, and I'll let you know, come back in a couple of days. So the lady came back, the devil told me what to buy. He said, buy a coffin box, buy 21 black candles, uh, buy an image of the lady, put her in the box, you know, to do the witchcraft, to kill this lady. So we were gonna do her, for 21 days, she was gonna die. After 21 days, we were gonna do her funeral. So when the lady came to my house, I'm gonna charge you $10,000, I told her, to kill the lady. She said, sure. She said, I'll tell you what, I know you. You've been good to me. I go to your house parties. Give me $7,000. I'll give you 30% off. I said, I'll kill her. I give me 30%. I'll take 30% off the 10. Give me, give me 7000 So when the lady was going to leave my house, she said, by the way, she's a, she's a Christian. She said, the lady's a Christian. I said, I'll kill her for free. I said, I don't need the money. I said, I'm going to kill her for free. I'm going to teach these Christians a lesson that they're, they're going to learn. I'll kill her for free. I told her, I don't want your money. I'll kill her for free. So I did the voodoo thing. I did the, the witchcraft thing. And 21 days went by. The lady didn't die. Uh, 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 a month went by. The lady didn't die. And, and I was like, wow, you know, what's going on? I mean, my reputation's online. So I called the devil, I called the demons that were signed. I, I increased the, the witchcraft. I increased the witchcraft. To, I doubled the witchcraft on it so she can die like overnight. Nothing was going on. Nothing was going on. I was home at night and the devil shows up. And I feel the presence that the devil comes into my mouth. And then uh, the devil told me, we have to abort the plan that the lady that you want to kill. And I said, why would we want to abort the plan? My reputation online. I'm a witch. I'm a, I'm a warlock. If I don't kill the lady, they're gonna think that I don't have any powers. The devil said, "You don't know. You don't understand." The God that she serves said, "Don't leave her. Leave her alone. Don't touch her." And I said, "Who's this God?" She said, "The God that she serves." So I, 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 I was so angry. I was so I said, "No, but let's get one more week. Let's kill her." And he said, "No, the God that she serves said, leave her alone." From the, the witchcraft that I did to the lady, she should have been dead in less than 21 days. How you doing, man? This gonna crack when I see it. This is Jezebel. This is Jezebel in religion. This, this is by works. See, these statues here, this here don't mean nothing. But it's a demon behind so, 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 so in order for me to identify to this, this has to be created because I can't identify to a spirit. I can't identify just because the spirit, we don't have nothing in common. I'm humanity. A spirit is immortality. A spirit is a spirit of demon. I can't relate to it. So in order for me to relate to it, he has to put this guy in the middle so I can relate to it because he's human form. He knows how to human being. There's a story behind this guy so now I can relate to him. So the demon operates to him. You understand? Same thing with these guys. And then they give themselves names and dates and birthdays. Yeah, they said these are how the American Indians get caught up with demonic forces and they get, they get caught up into the occult. This is the, these are the attractions of the Native American Indians. But those are statues that the people that use camouflage the demonic ways and demonic religion. There's nothing here that is holy. There's nothing here. The only thing that's holy here is us standing here. Mm. What happens in this place? Like this what? place here in the back, they do witchcraft, they do voodoo, they do, they do, they do witch spells in the back, they do cleansing in the back. Over here, they, all these demons, they want you to buy these statues so you can take a demon home. Mm. They select the prayers. Mm. So they, they make you believe that you pray to God. Look, see, I used to, I used to use this book for selected prayers. They make you think that you're praying to God, but these prayers are not, God, they're not godly prayers. There's nothing in the Bible that says nothing about the Bible, the crucifixion. We had a book in New York, in, in America. I was the third person to get this book that has symbols of the book, of different demons, of different principality, of different ways of killing people through witchcraft. And, and this book was so, no one had, had a copy of this book. You couldn't have a copy of this book unless the devil signed off on it. 
and I was the third person that received that book. And I would take symbols from that book and do witchcraft to people and put people in, in, in uh, make people lose their mind. I put witchcraft on people, make people get diseases out of nowhere. I put witchcraft on people, make people get leprosy. I put witchcraft on people, make people get cancer. I mean, I did witchcraft to people. I gave people miscarriages. I gave people abortions. I gave people. I put people in hospital for for, non, for surgeries that they didn't even have to go surgeries. I did witchcraft so people can lose their minds. I, I put spirits of, of, of bipolar, fichophrenic. I put spirits of, of 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 disease on people. I put suicide spirits on people. I'd be up all night long, praying and talking to the devil. When Christians can't even go to church for one year, for one hour. When Christians can't even pray for one hour, the spirit realm is, so, is more real than the natural realm. And, and we fail to see that. And whatever is not covered with Jesus Christ is an easy target to bring down. Like the atheists, I can kill them easily. They were easy to kill. The, the, the Jehovah's Witness were easy to destroy. Uh, moment later, it was easy to destroy. Uh, the, 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 per, the people that would walk around and say, we don't believe in the devil, they were easy to destroy because they will not seek any spiritual help. I remember the time that Nikki Cruz came to uh, Nikki Cruz group came into my neighborhood, and uh, it's called Truce. They would come and do drive-bys in my neighborhood. They would do like worship, and then they would preach a word and go to another corner and do the same thing. And I, I came after this group to try to put them, to try to bring them down. This group, and they were young kids. They were like 18, 17, 16, 20. I mean, so I said, how did they play this junk, this filthy music in my neighborhood? With them? today we call worship. This filthy music in my neighborhood. I'm gonna go after them. I'm gonna destroy these kids. So when I went up to when I went up to uh, when I when I went up to uh, where they were at, there was a wall of fire around them. I couldn't penetrate and touch them, and it was something pushed me back. Every time I tried to throw demonic forces again, there was something that would just push me back, and I was able to touch these kids. And I said, "There was something here. It's, it's not right. Something is not falling into place." So I walked away and I left them alone. I didn't want to deal with them. I said, "Okay, you know, they won. The, they won this first round." So. There's obviously spirits here watching us. Yeah, oh yeah, not oh yeah, happy, watching right? us. Yeah, of course they're watching us. Yeah, and so we're all protected. We're yeah, all, we're protected. Yeah, we're yeah. under the blood, brother. Yeah. They're not like the blood of Jesus. Uh, okay. Amen. Yeah, they're all good. protected, but they're not. They can touch us because mm. they, Joe said, "What well, we got? We got a hedge of protection mm. around us, right. and we can walk into this place. And we can chase demons out of here. We can, we can, we can curse this place to the ground in Jesus' name, and there's nothing that the devil can do." Mm. I mean, I have so much money. Beautiful cars, beautiful woman. I had it all. I lived in a world that people, my neighborhood was, they, my neighborhood, they were terrified who I was. They said, we met, if you mess with that guy, your family will die. If you mess with that guy, he don't need a gun. He'll kill your family in his sleep. My daddy was awesome. My daddy was, he, he knew, he had, he gave me powers beyond I could imagine. He gave me powers that people had fear in me. The police had fear in me. The security in my neighborhood had fear in me. And people that knew that I was, a, I was, a, I was a, a, the devil's son, they would call me the devil's son. I brought Christian to the knees, not to prayer, because they had no power. It, it, it wasn't because your God wasn't all powerful. Don't get me wrong. Because your God was all powerful. The vessel was weak. The vessel had no prayer life. The prayer had no fasting life. And they had no relationship with God. There was a form of godliness in the person, but no power. The person was weak. The person had nothing going. He had a Bible. He had the right suit on. She had the right dress on. But there was no connection with Jesus Christ because you was out of his will you was out of his promises and you was out of his divine purpose and I had you I own you I had you as a slave I broke you I put witchcraft on you I kept doing that to Christian after Christian after Christian after families after churches I chased everything down that represent the cross of Jesus Christ very demonic place so that place has an effect on the whole neighborhood, the whole you're saying? Oh yeah, of course. Oh, that, 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 that just had this whole, this whole region on lockdown. That's the devil's throne. We just went into the devil's throne. Hmm. That, that throne been there since the 80s. And then they go there, spend, they spend $100, $200 buying all these things. And, and then they broke their they, they on welfare, public assistance, but they got money to buy all this junk. They think their life is going to get better. They think that their life is going to improve. They think that they're, they're going to make progress in life. They think that they're going to break generational curses, curses. They think they're going to break, you know, vex, you know, vex spells, voodoo. They think they're going to break all that. And basically, God said, I come, I do it for you for free. Just give your life to me and I'll set you free. But they don't want that. That's too difficult for them. That's too complicated for them. But they can walk into a place like this and drop $200 to think that their life is going to be free. And they're going to live a life in abundance. I had contact with the principality that runs Haiti. His name is Candelo. 
I had contact with I had contact with demons in Miami. I had contact with demons in Africa. I had contact with demons here in New York City, principalities that run the crossroads of the world here on 42nd Street. Okay, there's a different principality that run the crossroads of the world here on 42nd Street than the ones that try to run here in this neighborhood. I was I didn't have a conscience. I, I remember I did witchcraft to my brother and I put him in jail for five years. The witchcraft that to my own brother, my own flesh and blood. I did witchcraft to him. I put him in jail for five years. I did my other brother that was a wallah. He came into my house one time with an attitude and, and, and the demon jumped on him. And he ran out the house. He couldn't hold the pain in his stomach. My mother can bear witness to that. I did so much ceremonies in my body. I did, a, I did, I did so much ceremonies in my body. The last ceremony I did was not only sell my soul to the devil. I did a ceremony that I had to swallow uh, animal blood and gunpowder. It was called Sansi. Sansi is a ceremony of, of, of Haitian and French that you do the ceremony with a demon. That so when I go to people's houses and eat, they can't put witchcraft on the food. I did that kind. Of, I had. I did all the ceremonies you can do. I knew. I I will, I will go to demon church. And every year, we will have a meeting, a secret meeting. All the high witches and warlock will have this meeting to find out what, usher, what principality we will to usher out and bring in to run the region. We will, we were more organized than the church itself. The kingdom of darkness was more organized than the church of Jesus Christ. We knew how to do ceremonies. We knew how to do things before the year was over to prepare ourselves for the next year. When Christians couldn't go to church and pray for one hour. When Christians could go to church and, and have a consistent relationship with God. I even took a sabbatical from witchcraft and the devil punished me, took my eyesight for one year. I was completely blind for one year, registered with the commission of the blind. I was completely blind. They was training me to use an eye seeing dog and they was training me to use one of these sticks that you use that you walk the streets with. I was, my mother took care of me for one year. My eyes went black and a mist of gray went over my eyes. I was completely blind and when I gave my life back to the devil, after seven surgery, the devil gave me back my eyesight, and I could see again. And I, and that was my punishment for taking, for taking a, one year off. I wanted to take off the devil. The devil said, "You want one year off? I'll give it to you." He took my eyesight, and that's the world I lived in. If if you mess with the devil, he'll kill you. He'll kill your family. It was a fear that will grip you beyond measure. That you could not leave this religion. You could not leave Santeria. You could not leave Paloma Nube, and you could not leave spiritualism. The doctors could not explain how I lost my eyesight. Meanwhile, Christians, and I was like, why Christians do bad? And Christians sometimes miss the mark. And the only thing that shows up in their house is grace and mercy. When you show up with the devil and you do something the devil don't like, he kills someone, he kill your family member. And when the, I remember the devil warned this lady, she said, you can't be with that person no more. And she didn't want to, she didn't care because she was in love with the person. The devil demon possessed a homeless guy in the street. He took a hammer, hit her 17 times over her head, killed her. One day I was sitting home. And it was amazing. I came from a nightclub the night before. I was sitting home watching a show called Jerry Springer. I know the craziest show. People beat each other up. I, I, I get joy out of that. I was getting joy out of that, laughing. For the first time, I heard a voice say to me, Son, I am coming soon. What are you going to do with your life? An order of a voice shot from, a, from across the room. And that door was a TV that was talking to me. And I said, No, this is, it can't be a TV because these people are beating each other up. This voice, I knew the voice of the devil. I was sitting with the devil like I'm sitting with you today. He would come into human form. He will come in the, the room. He'll, he'll come in sometime. The presence of him will come into the room. The atmosphere changes. And I know he would sit with me and he would talk into my conscience and we would talk back and talk all night long. I knew that too. I knew it like you knew the back of your hand. I knew every demon, every principality that ran the region, ran everything in America, everything in Canada, everything that ran. I knew every principality that ran every occult, Wicca, New Age, Buddhism, Islam. Uh, Santeria, spiritualism. I knew every principality that ran. I had a contract with every principality with them. I had straight A marks of every principality, every demon on the ground, the devil, Jezebel. I had every, I had, I had new demons that I can't even tell you the name because you want to know who they are. I knew them all by name. And this voice was very different than any other voice. When I heard that voice come out of nowhere, it came out of the air, the voice. And I, and I, I, I wanted to shock and then I saw I, and then I saw a vision from, from the other side of the apartment that the, the sky was on fire and people underneath. I saw people running for cover, but there was no cover where to hide. And I said, why would I see that vision? So I shook it off. But I remember I went to sleep, like a, like a deep sleep. I like, like someone put on a t-shirt and I went to sleep. I ended up in a train full of people. I couldn't believe that I was in a train full of people. 
and his chin was going faster than you can ever imagine. I've never been on something this fast on earth. And they went into hell. And Jesus Christ took me to hell. And when I got to hell, the doors opened. I mean, there was a slam in the doors. There was an unspeakable echo. They, 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 all the doors opened. And there was heat that came out of nowhere. That I, I felt like you were going to suffocate the heat that came out. And I ran in, I, I got out the train. And the people in the train, they, they had no faces. But you could see the fear on the people on the train. You could feel the fear, the impact of the fear that they were going to a place that they were never going to return. And the place was packed. And then I, I, I tried, I said, I can't die here. I said, I can't die. This is not for me. I wasn't born to be in this place. And I was saying this to myself. I was not born to be here. So I tried to find out the tunnel, like a tunnel in hell. And I was walking to the tunnel. I was trying to run to the tunnels in hell, try to find a door, maybe a window. M maybe uh, maybe uh, there was a gap somewhere that I can come out and come back to reality. But there was no gap. And I remember as, I, as, I, as, as the more I went to, into, into the tunnels, the more the fear gripped me, the more, the more, the more the suffering, I heard suffering, darkness drapes over you, this fear drapes over you, like, like you're wearing a garment, this fear drapes over you, it's something you can't even control, you have no control over, it's something like it, it, it grabs you, that it don't, it don't even let you go, I couldn't see the hand in front of my face, but I hear the wailing, I hear wailing, like you ever hear like a kid wail and an animal wail at the same time, like, you, it's, it's like that kind of wailing, it's undescribable, and, 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 and it was a heat and a smell that was like, like, like if he was like in the sewers of the gutters of New York City. But, I mean, but, but, but crazy than that. And, and, and then, and then I, 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 as I came to a part of, of, of the tunnel, the devil showed up. He said, I, I, I was your daddy. He spoke to me in the amount of time. I was your daddy. I gave you everything you needed. I took care of you. I blessed you. I protected you. I, did, I killed people for you. I did everything. I gave you powers. I gave you a name in the, dark, in the kingdom of darkness. I gave you a name. When people came against you, I destroyed them because I knew that you were going to be the vessel that I was going to use to move my kingdom on the earth. And now you want to leave me? Now you want to betray me? In demonic tongues. And I'm talking to him back in demonic tongues and telling him, no, I'm not leaving. I'm just confused. I don't know what's going on. And he said, no, I know what you're going to do. You're going to leave me and you're going to expose my religion. You're going to expose who I am and how I operate in the, in the spirit realm. You, because I taught you things that I never taught no one else. I show you things. I trusted you with the things that I needed you to know so you can further my kingdom because I wanted to use you in a greater measure way. And, 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 and the confused, he went to grab me. As he went to grab me to destroy me, the cross of Jesus Christ, P in hell. I didn't understand how a, two, a three foot cross of P in hell when I was wearing the blue shorts and the t-shirt. And I put it on him. And when I put it on him, the devil melt like he was a, like he was an infant. Like an infant, he melt and fell on the floor, like no powers. So I, I, I took that opportunity and I ran, back in, I ran deeper into the gates. I ran deeper into the tunnels of hell hoping that there was a door. I had, my hope was being, there was a hope and no hope at all. There was no place to say, I'm coming out of here. This is it, this, 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 this is the end. I, 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 had a, I had a fear that gripped me that I was undescribable. I never felt a fear like that. I never felt, I never felt a, a, a despair. It was the opposite of what heaven is. Uh, it, it was opposite of joy. It was opposite of gladness. It was opposite of peace. It was opposite of light from darkness. It was a place of torment, a place of, I, 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 if I'm here, my family don't know I'm here. My daughter don't know I'm here. How would they find me? How would they look for me? So as I, as I went deep into the tunnel of hell, hoping that there was a door, a window, a crack somewhere that I can get out, the devil showed up again, and so now we'll destroy you. So what I did was, I told him in the demonic language, I got these marks, these are my contract to protect me, to destroy you. He said, fool, I gave you those marks. Those are my marks that I own you. I own you. No one owns you. I do. And you're going to live for me or you die. And when he went to Grammy the second time around, I said, it's finished. I said, I, I, this is it. He went to Grammy the second time around. The cross of Jesus Christ. Here. In hell. There's no greater love than the cross that would come for sinner like me in hell. So when David say, if I make my bed in hell, he knows I'm there. Grace and mercy showed up in hell. Grace and mercy knew my address. Grace and mercy have a plan for my life. To my despicable, demonic, selfish ways, arrogant, self-centered ways in hell, when I was done for the count, 
Jesus Christ loved the misfit and he said I have a plan for you I love you beyond you can ever imagine and he showed up in hell and when I woke up then my spirit came back into my body I woke up and I bent my knee to Jesus Christ I had a hundred thousand dollar witchcraft stuff in my house I threw witchcraft away I threw religion away I threw everything that had to do with darkness away the, the people from Haiti the people from Cuba the people from Miami and New York said we have to kill him because he knows too much we have to destroy him we have to kill him because he knows too much he's not one of us anymore and they came for the kill they came they did their best they came for the kill I was sleeping in the day towards that night when the demons show up and tormented me for 30 days they tormented me for 30 days. They would grab me by my throat, pick me off my bed. The room would go cold. I would lay in my bed. I'd find another person laying next to me, ice cold under the person. I would look like this and I can feel the presence of that It was the devil himself laying in my bed for 30 days, on and off, on and off, tormenting, torture, trying to steal my mind, trying to rip my soul out of my body, trying to rip my spirit out of my body. I would, I would tremble at night, like never trembled before, 30 days, and I would cry out. I didn't know how to pray. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They know how to pray. I said, maybe I pray like my sister prays. I heard her in church. She prayed this way. I heard that person pray this way. I would bring all these prayers together to try to put them together like a puzzle to try to fight for my life. And one day I was, I was, I was in church worshiping and, and, I, and I would ask the Lord, Lord, why are you letting people, why are you let this happen to me? And one day I heard the voice of God again. He said, I wanted to see how much you love me. And he said, I wanted to see how much you trust me. And ever again, I was tormented by the devil. And I became an evangelist for Jesus Christ. 14 years serving the Lord, and I will never trade it for nothing in the world. And I know that in Sowen Hallelujah Boulevard, there is a mansion for John Ramirez. And one day it says, Welcome home, well done, faithful servant. And I tell you, there's nothing. And I'm not talking about Christianity, I'm talking about relationship with Jesus Christ. He is my Lord, Mr. He is my beginning, and then a weapon formed against me wherever possible. I died. When Jesus said I go home, not because of a witch, not because of a person, not because of heck, voodoo, vex, incantation, none of that can separate me from the love of God. Hundred thousand dollars of witchcraft, selling my soul, marks here, marks here, marks here. But the biggest mark is here, is the love that I have for the cross, and nothing like the cross of Jesus Christ. And I tell you this, and I end with this. I was cursed, I became blessed, because the one that was blessed became cursed for me. And I switched daddies. And my daddy sits in the universe. And he loves me beyond I could imagine. And that love now I can give to my daughter. And my daughter today, she's a born again Christian, graduated from college, psychology major. And I know that God's gonna use her in a greater way. Because the baton that I have, I will pass to her, the right baton this time. And I know she'll do a greater exploit than her daddy. And before I leave the earth, people will know that John Romero was here because he served Almighty God. Amen.